Hey you guys, welcome to Talk About It Thursdays. I am your host, Karen Bailey. Let me know when you're on. I would love to say hello to you. Let me check and make sure all of my devices are turned off. That way we are not disturbed. I'm praying everybody's having an amazing week. Uh, it is almost Thanksgiving, you guys. Believe it or not, I cannot believe how quickly the time seems to go by. It'll be Thanksgiving. Hey, Rita. It'll be Thanksgiving, and then the next day it'll seem like it's Christmas. So time is really flying, you guys. I hope this year has been a good year for everybody. I hope everybody can see how much they've changed and how much they've grown this year, you know, because that's what it's all about. We got to we gotta make sure that we're changing every year. We don't want to stay the same. We got to make sure that we're evolving and that we are doing our best to put our best self out there. Hey, Kinsley. Hey, Pam. Good to see you guys. Happy Thursday. One of my... um. One of my uh, Facebook friends called it Friday Junior. I said, that's so cute. That is so stinking cute. So happy Friday Junior. And we'll get started in just a minute, you guys. I'm just giving everybody just a couple of seconds to hop on and then we'll get started because y'all know, like y'all, I got a million things I got to get done. And then last week, I hope you guys got something out of I'm Downloading. I hope that you saw yourself and the progress that you're making, like I said, and what things you need to be allowing in your life and downloading in your life and what things that you may need to step away from because they're not healthy for you. They're not helping you get to your best self. So I hope y'all got something out of I'm downloading from last week. So let's get started, you guys. Today, I want to talk about intimacy. You know, my topic is intimacy. Can you really or truly see me? You know, a lot of times people think intimacy is just about sex. You know, but think about it. Animals have sex all the time. You know, two strangers have sex all the time. So how can intimacy be only about the sexual part? Intimacy entails four different parts. And we're going to talk about that today, you guys. And you don't hear a whole lot about people talking about intimacy, you know, on social media, everybody's just trying to hook up and get what they can while they can. But that's the reason why most relationships fail is because of a lack of intimacy in some kind of way. That's why the sex can be good and then it'll just kind of die off and then y'all no longer even like each other and, you know, you're not even attracted anymore because without all four elements, it's not going to work. Everything is temporary until it's all put together. So that's what we want to talk about, what intimacy really means. Intimacy in a relationship is a feeling of being close and emotionally connected and supported, you guys. It means being able to share a whole range of thoughts, your feelings, your experiences with other human beings. And there's four types of intimacy. Number one is emotional. Number two is physical. Number three is mental. And number four is spiritual. Now, to truly understand intimacy, you must truly learn yourself first. That's why it's so important to have some time to yourself because when you don't know what you want, when when your emotions are all over the place, you don't have any control over yourself, it's going to be hard to be in an intimate relationship with anybody else because everything's always going to be about you because you never got those things in check. You never took some time to kind of figure out what makes you happy, what makes you uh, excited, what makes you you know, what makes you feel love? And when you don't know those things and you allow the world to tell you what love is, you're going to have some trouble with intimacy. And then some of us, even though we may not want to admit it, some of us actually fear intimacy. You know, intimacy is one of those things, if you've never had it, it can be scary because you are left vulnerable. You know, you are open when you're intimate with somebody. And if you've never had that, it's a scary thing because 
you have to really trust that other person to be open and let them see you for who you really are. You know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's not something that happens every day. And everybody hasn't experienced that in their life. And it's scary. And especially as we start getting older, we feel like I should have experienced this by now. I should have done this by now. But sometimes the choices that we made in our relationships, the person we decided to connect to, you know, they were never taught about intimacy. They never saw it, you know, and what you don't see, how can you, you imitate it? You know, a lot of times we saw adults. I know in my life, I never saw true people in love growing up in the relationships in my family, uh, in my friends' families. I never saw two adults that truly loved each other and truly looked out for each other and seemed to have that intimate connection to where they couldn't do without the other. I have not experienced that in my life. I mean, I've come close. I've come to some false intimacy, what I thought was intimacy. And then you find out later that's not what it is. But when it's not been modeled in front of you, it could be a little bit scary. Because it requires you to open up and for you to trust and for you to be vulnerable and for you to let somebody see you without all the fakeness, without all the pretense. You let them see, like I said, the hurt, the pain, your shortcomings, all of that. So there are reasons that some of us fear intimacy. Number one, past experiences with neglect. You know, if somebody you trusted and counted on or expected to be there or, or you put all your hope in, if they didn't treat you right, think about our parents, those children that, that don't have good parents or parents out here on drugs or parents out here doing all kinds of things. Those children are going to have so much trouble with intimacy because they've been neglected as children. They may have been fed and clothed, but as far as the intimacy teaching me how to love and how to be loved. They missed out on that. And some of us missed out on that. We were raised, but they didn't think that that was important, probably because they didn't know anything about it. So a lot of times it's from past experience with neglect. And that makes it really hard for us to want to be intimate with somebody because we don't want to trust somebody. We don't want to put our hope in somebody and they just let us down. You know, so so a lot of times that's what's happened to us. Number two, past experiences with trauma. You know, some of us have gone through situations where we were taken out of a situation. You know, some of these kids, you know, are taken away from their parents. And that's all that they know. But that household was not safe for that child. It was not the right environment. And maybe CPS had to come in and remove those children. That's traumatic. Because honestly, that's the only love that they know. That's all that they know. Or, or if you have been in a bad relationship, you know, and, and you had your heart broken and you really thought that person was your one, that was going to be the person you were going to marry. That was going to be your forever person. And, and something happened in that relationship and that relationship fell apart. Sometimes just the trauma of that will will make you fear intimacy because you don't want to be hurt like that anymore. Mm -hmm. Number three, past experiences with abuse. You know, abuse is not only physical abuse, it's emotional, it's verbal, it's sexual, it's all of that. You know, if you've ever been in a relationship with somebody that always judged you or somebody that always put you down, made you feel bad about yourself, yelled at you, intimidated you, those type of things, experiences with abuse will make you fear intimacy because you're afraid because you're like, if I open up to this, what's going to happen? You know, are they going to leave like the last person? Are they going to treat me like the last person if I open up and I give it my all? You know, when you've experienced abuse, you have a wall. And I'm a living witness to this. I have a wall that I'm slowly trying to chop down because I don't want to be that person that misses out on the one simply because of my past. So that's something I have to work on all the time. And I have to pray about all the time because I need God to send somebody that understands what I've gone through. 
And that's another part of intimacy. When you can share what you've gone through with somebody and they take that to heart and they understand or they do their best to try to understand, you know, where you're coming from and, and why you respond the way you do, why, why, why this makes you cry, why, why this makes you afraid. You know, that person has to take time to get to know you. And, and that's that ugly past too. I mean, they have to be able to accept the fact that we all have a past and it's better to put that stuff out there so that that person knows the kind of person they're dealing with or what kind of things that person is trying to be healed from. So past experiences with abuse can make you afraid of being intimate with someone because you don't know what it's like to truly be loved. So it's scary. Just the idea of it. Because most of the time when you're in an abusive relationship, you don't feel good about yourself anyway. So it's hard for you to believe somebody can truly love you like that. You always have that suspicion. You're always feeling like you're not good enough. Okay? And there are three things that prevent us from fully opening up and trusting. One, I said fear of intimacy which is the reduced ability because of anxiety to exchange thoughts or personal um, things with another person. You know, like I say, because of fear of intimacy, you know, we decide how much we're going to share with you. We decide how far we're going to let you go. We decide how close we're going to allow you to get to us because we're afraid. And then fear will make you see the other person as more valuable than you. And then you'll start thinking you don't deserve love and affection. You'll become apprehensive and anxious about being in a close relationship. It'll make you so nervous to the point where you might even decide to sabotage it because you're just so uncomfortable with somebody loving you like that. And this happens more commonly in women, you guys, because sometimes, you know, we have not been treated well. And then when someone comes in our life and they treat us different and they treat us in a way we're not used to, we really don't know how to handle it. That's why a man really needs to know where you come from, you know, so that he will understand. It's not that you don't appreciate his love. You just don't know what to do with it because nobody's ever truly loved you just for you. So that's going to take some understanding from that other part. And there are signs, you know, of a person that fears intimacy. And then they avoid circumstances involving closeness or vulnerability with other people. They try to, you know, laugh it off and they try to make sure that they don't get too comfortable with anybody or too attached to anybody because they're always thinking that person is going to let them down or fail them in some way. And then number two. Despite what people believe about intimacy, it's much, much more than just taking off your clothes. It involves really deeply getting to know someone because if it was, if it was just that easy, anybody could do it. That's why intimacy is so hard because it's not what people think it is. And when it comes to emotional intimacy, it can be just as powerful as physical intimacy. You know, when, when you're in tune with somebody in your emotions and, and y'all just connect, y'all just fit, sometimes you don't even care about the physical part. You just want to be around that person because being around that person just makes you better and makes you feel better. And people who dread close personal relationships are more likely to act out, to find a reason to fight. Y'all have been around people like that when you try to love them and they don't know how to be loved. Seem like they just not satisfied unless something's going on, unless there's some drama somewhere. It's because they are trying to get away from letting go and letting their guard down and allowing you to get close to them. So they'll find reasons to act out and do things that they know that you don't like because they don't want you to get close to them because they're afraid of it. They don't feel like they're worthy. And a lot of times us as women, we don't know how to take that. But that's why it's so important to get to know that person before you get your feelings all involved with them because that may not be something you want to deal with. 
You know, he may be so damaged that he needs to be by himself or she may be so damaged that she needs some time by herself so God can heal her. So that's why I don't rush into a relationship. Get to know people. Find out what's happened in their past. Find out what they're still dealing with. Find out what they struggle with in a relationship. And that requires a conversation, you guys. You know, you can't just be sitting up smiling, looking cute all the time. You've got to dig deep with people and get in deep with them because what you don't confront, you will have to deal with in that relationship. And then another person that you can tell has a fear of intimacy is the people that won't let go of past pain. Because when they won't forgive people for what they've done, or, or they're always comparing what you do and saying, well, see, that's what so-and-so did to me. She did it just like that. And, and see, this is why I don't like to get close to people. No, you're struggling with intimacy. It's not that other person's fault. That's something you need to deal with and you need to let go of what somebody else did to you and stop making that new person pay for what somebody in your past did to you. Because the pain you're not willing to transform into a healthy habits, into a healthy relationship will in turn transmit bad behavior. You know, you have to allow your pain to change you in a good way. You know, we all have a, have a choice to make. You know, just about everybody on this podcast has had somebody hurt them deeply. And, and I know the names on here, so I, I know what I'm talking about because I know y'all. Y'all have had people betray y'all. Y'all have had people hurt you deeply. But you've got to decide to transform that pain into something else, to, into something better. Let it make you better. Let it make you, you know, more determined to be a better person so that you don't end up doing the stuff that somebody else did to you. Let it transform transform you into being stronger, you know, and, and transform you into a person that, you know, I'm a little bit more cautious now. You know, I pay attention now. See, that's a good thing because sometimes we, we like what we want, we like and we want what we want and we ignore the red flag. So sometimes that pain has to remind you that, okay, you need to pay attention. You know, you need to ask questions. You need to think more of yourself, value yourself a little bit more. So don't let that pain go to waste. Don't let what somebody did to you in your past go to waste. Use that to make you a better person. That way, later on in your next relationship, you won't let that turn into bad behavior. You'll transmit that into something good instead of allowing yourself to be ate up with things from your past. But we all have a choice. And people who have childhood trauma, of fear, neglect, or abuse, this could cause that child to have a fear of intimacy. Because we have to remember our first loves were our parents. So what your parents do to you can either make you more able to have intimacy later on, or it could cause a stumbling block in your life. Because when you haven't been parented correctly, it makes things harder for you when you grow up. When it comes to relationship, it makes things harder. That's why I encourage people, I tell young people all the time, if you're not ready for kids, don't don't have kids. Take your time. Grow up first. Because what you do in your raising your children is going to affect them all the way into their adulthood. And that's what's happened to some of us. And that's why we struggle so much with intimacy because we weren't parented, especially in the area of love. Because there are so many different areas of parenting. We all had parents that fed us, clothed us, made sure we went to school, kept us out of trouble. But they missed some of those significant things that we need now as adults in our lives. And we're having to try to struggle through and learn. We're kind of behind the curve, you know, that, um, when other people may have gotten that nurturing, may have gotten that understanding as children. Some of us have to just try to play catch up. But that's okay. That's okay. And then signs are always there that we're afraid. Because we fear somebody getting close to us. We fear somebody getting comfortable with us. 
And when that starts to happen, those negative thoughts take over. So sometimes we end up distancing ourselves because we're scared. We don't know how to be intimate with somebody. And we don't trust them enough to be intimate with them. And like I said before, sometimes we find reasons to act out and get angry. Some of us prefer casual sex over making a serious emotional connection because it's just easier to get what you want and go on. Some of us have low self-esteem. We don't feel worthy. Some of us just don't trust anybody because of what's happened to us in the past. Some of us never talk about our feelings with anybody because we don't want to feel ridiculed. We don't trust people with, with our secrets. Because some people you can't trust. You have to be careful who you share things with. So some people have been hurt because they've shared and it backfired on them or they got mistreated because of it or everybody found out their business. So they've made up their mind. I'm just not going to open up to anybody else like that anymore. Some of us choose unhealthy or unstable relationships that never last. That was me. Rarely show love and affection. Some of us, we don't even try. We, it don't take all that. When deep inside, you really want that in your life. But simply because you have this wall built up, you try to convince yourself that you don't need somebody to show you love and affection. And then you hide your fear of intimacy behind strong opinions about it. You know, like I just said, it don't take all of that. I don't need all that. I'm doing fine by myself. But most of us, I dare say on this page, would rather be doing life with somebody than doing life by ourselves. Life is so much better if you can share it with somebody. And it's got to be the right somebody, you guys. So let's talk about emotional intimacy. Okay, what this is, is the closeness and connection between two people who feel safe and secure with one another. And number two, the idea of being seen, being known, being understood by somebody else. That's that emotional intimacy, you guys. It involves getting to know each other deeply. That's what I say about them conversations. Ask those questions. Quit being scared to ask people questions that you're potentially going to be in a relationship with. Worst thing could happen. They get mad. They don't want to answer the question. Then you know you don't need to be with them anyway. But you need to care enough about yourself to go deep with people with, with the conversation before you go deep with them with your body and with your emotion. Find out what you're dealing with first. You strive to know your partner or your friend on a deeper level. You want to know their struggles, what they celebrate, how they feel about events that have happened in their life. All of that's important if you're going to be emotionally intimate with somebody. And it involves allowing another person to see you for who you truly are. Not with the pretense that we put out there on social media, not Tell anybody everything's good. Let that person see you for who you really are. Like I said, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You deserve somebody that loves you through all of that. And then number six, emotional intimacy is to build a connection. Both of you have the desire to continue to build on your connection. And you have to let your guard down. You got to trust the other person with your private feelings. And that's not easy to do. But that's what emotional intimacy is about. And signs that you have an emotional intimacy with somebody, intimacy with somebody is you feel safe. Number one, sharing your issues and concerns with that other person. Number two, you don't feel alone. You feel supported like somebody has your back. Number three, you know that your lover or your friend will listen to you without judgment. That is so important when it comes to emotional intimacy. When you connect with somebody like that to where you know you can tell them if you can't tell nobody else. And they're not going to make you feel bad about yourself. They're not going to judge you. They're not going to make you feel like you're stupid or belittle you. That's that intimacy that you want to be able to talk about whatever you need to talk about 
without feeling judged. Number four, and if something is bothering you about the way that person, that partner, that friend, that lover, whatever is treating you, you are able to talk to them about it. You don't have to be scared to talk to them about it. That's a sign that you are in emotional intimacy with somebody. Number five, you always have someone to share both your ups and your downs with. And you know that they're really listening to you. Because you know what? They show you that they support you when you're up and they support you when you're down. Number six, you care deeply for one another. Number seven, you can easily shift from light conversation to deep conversation. There's no limits when you are you have a good emotional intimacy with somebody. There's no limits. Nothing is off limits that we talk about. We can be laughing one minute and talking serious the next. It's, it's going to go flawlessly when when you have a good emotional intimacy with somebody. You don't have to think about it is what I'm saying. You'll be able to talk just how you want to talk. You don't have to think, oh, well, should I bring this up? Oh, I don't want to make him mad. Oh, I don't want to upset her. When you have a good emotional connection with somebody of intimacy, you don't have to worry about all of that. And number eight, you can feel empathy from your partner or your friend. You know that when you're hurting, it hurts them. You can feel it. You can sense it. That they really love you so much that because it's bothering you, it's bothering them. Number nine, you are generally interested in the other person and welcome them sharing their feelings and their experiences with you. Hey, Jeremy. And then number 10, you are able to be present without being distracted by other people, your phone, all of that. You know, when, when you know you have a good emotional intimacy with, some, intim, intimacy with someone, you don't have to worry about them answering their phone in the middle of, their, of your conversation. You know, you got a deep conversation going and they keep looking at their phone. You know, they're going to make sure they turn their phone off or turn their phone on silent because they want to be present. They want to hear what you got to say. They know that it's important that they be there with you right in that moment. People that don't know about intimacy, those are the ones that will be sitting right there. You're in the middle of a conversation and they'll throw their finger up and they'll answer their phone. Or they'll send somebody a text message right in the middle of a conversation. Or those are the ones that will answer their phone while you're out at dinner. And somebody like, oh, were you busy? No, I'm okay. What's up? Or no, go ahead. And leave you sitting across the table. I don't know if that's ever happened to y'all. But that's happened to me. And it just put a damper on the whole dinner. Because I'm like, okay, am I not important enough for you to put your distractions aside. So when you have a real emotional intimacy with someone, they know how important it is to be present. They know how important it is to look in your eyes and talk to you and pay attention so they don't miss things in your life. And then 11, when they hurt, you hurt as well. Just like I said before, they feel empathy and then you as well. If they hurt or if something is bothering them, it also bothers you as well. So that was emotional intimacy. Let's talk about physical intimacy. Most of us know about that. You know, it oftentimes gets confused by one party as emotional intimacy. You know, some of us, especially us ladies, we have to be careful because it's hard to do those casual hookups because you will get emotionally attached. And it happens to men too, but I think it happens more often uh, to women. You have to know yourself. That's why I say spend some time by yourself because you're going to find out if you're that person, you're that kind of woman that can do those casual hookups without being connected or you're the kind of guy that can do that casual stuff without getting emotionally attached because if that's not who you are 
don't put yourself out there like that because you're the one that's going to get hurt. And sometimes people think just because somebody's being physical with them that they have an emotional attachment to them as well. And then you find out later that it was just sex to them. So, so be careful when you're dealing with the physical stuff that you know the difference between a hookup or something that's casual or someone that's actually trying to connect with you and want to have a relationship and want to spend time with you and give their life with you so that they can form a, a healthy relationship with you. And the act of physical affection doesn't always mean love is there. Sometimes it's just lust. You're just attracted to that person. They look good. They smell good. You know, it's them pheromones are going. And sometimes that's just what it is. So you have to know what it is. Don't assume. And physical intimacy is one, any physical contact ranging from holding hands to actually having sex. Number two, physical intimacy can build. And as it builds trust, it can create feelings of warmth and bonding and closeness between two people. And physical intimacy, it expresses the way you feel about somebody through a physical reaction between two people. So that's what physical intimacy is. And like I say, you guys, just, just be careful not to get caught up in somebody that's not feeling the same way about you and be selective about who you give yourself to. And I'm talking to my singles, be, be selective, you know, because think about it at the end of the day, you got to look at you and you got to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? I'm proud of me. I'm, I'm happy with where my life is. But if you're connecting with somebody and they're seeing it as just a physical thing and then you find that you're having feelings for that person, you need to have a conversation. And if it's not a mutual thing, pull out of it before you get hurt. Pull out of it before you get your feelings any more involved because you don't want to be set back. You know, when when we get our heart broken, it sets us back because we tend to overthink things. We tend to blame ourselves and feel bad about ourselves. And that's time we're wasting, you guys, when you can be spending your days being happy, you know, being excited, doing new things, learning new things. But when you're hurting like that, it puts you back. It sets you back a little bit. And I don't want to see any of us set back like that. Let's talk about mental intimacy. Mental intimacy is so important to me in a relationship because, number one, it means having conversations that make you curious. Uh, they're intellectual. They stimulate you, whether about topics of common interest or meaningful, you know, conversations about life. It's just something about a good mental intimacy conversation that makes you want to talk to that person all the time. You can't wait to talk to them because when you talk to them, you learn things. You get excited. It opens your mind. It broadens your thoughts. And then number two, being open and talking through your thoughts and emotions and letting your guard down, being vulnerable and showing someone else how you feel and what your hopes and dreams are. It's a beautiful thing to be able to share that with somebody, but as we all know, you can't share that with everybody. You know, you have to get to that point in your relationship where you two understand that we're gonna talk about these things, we're gonna be there for each other, we're gonna support one another. And that's something that a lot of us haven't experienced in our past, but that doesn't mean we can't have that in our future. We've just gotta stop living in the past. We've gotta unlearn some bad behaviors. We gotta learn not to criticize people when they're sharing things with us. And we gotta be willing to allow somebody else to have a point of view and not always have to be right all the time. So it's, it's okay that we haven't experienced it, but you have to be willing and be open to, to, to allowing another person to have as much of a say as you do. Number three, being able to challenge each other and being open to learning 
or at least considering that other person's ideas. That's what mental intimacy is. There is no right or wrong. Everybody's got an opinion. Everybody's opinion is respected. You know, everybody's point of view is given, you know, top build. You know, nobody's smarter than the other. You know, you just feel like talking to that person when they when you talk to them, everything is right. Everything is good when you talk to them. That's when you know you've got a good mental intimacy with somebody intimacy with somebody is when talking to them helps you change your mind about things. You know how sometimes you can be frustrated about something and you talk to that right person where they give you all the other perspectives and let you see, you know, that maybe you're looking at it wrong or have you thought about this or well, did you consider this? You know, those type of things that challenge you, that's mental intimacy and you've got to be open to that and you've got to be willing to not uh, be that person that thinks they're right all the time because when you're right all the time, there's no point of anybody else talking to you. And then our last one, number four, is spiritual intimacy. Spiritual intimacy, to me, you guys, is between you and God. I don't believe you can have spiritual intimacy with a person. I believe you can have a spiritual connection with somebody. But as far as spiritual intimacy, you know, see into me, you know, transference, that's between you and God. And your level of intimacy with God directly affects your faith. It directly affects the strength you have to endure life's hardships. You know, a lot of times we wonder how people can handle some of the stuff that they've handled. They have an intimate relationship with God. Them and God have spent some time together. They've gone through some stuff. They've trusted God with some stuff in the past. God has come through for them. God is speaking to them and they're speaking to God. That's why some people can handle things that we can't even imagine how they still stand and how they still have their right mind. It's because they have an intimate relationship with God. And then remember what you focus on in life will only become bigger. And that's why it's important to spend time with God. That's why it's important to, to get that relationship with God because you're going to need it. Things are going to come up in this world, in this life that you're going to need God. God is the only one that can fix it. So you need to get your relationship with God together so that when you call on him, you're not calling out of desperation. You're calling out of trust. You're calling out of relationship. You know, not as a person that doesn't know God, that's weeping and crying and begging and all of that. You can be able to talk to God as the Father and understand that you have privileges, you have rights, you have an expectation. Okay? And then... A spiritual intimacy with God means God knows you better than anybody else. And why wouldn't he? You know, his word talks about he knew us before he even formed us. Nobody else. Our parents can't say that. You know, he knows our thoughts from afar off. He knows our intention. Y'all, he knows when we're lying. He knows when we're faking and shaking. He knows when we're trying to act like we're sincere and we're sneaking and doing stuff. God knows all of that. You can fool man. You can even fool yourself, but you can never fool God. So understand that. Nobody will ever know you the way God knows you. And God fights battles before you even know that there was even one to deal with. And so that's that spiritual intimacy. When you have that relationship with God, when, when God is for you and you love God and, and you reverence God and you fear God and you're grateful to God, that back and forth between you and God, that's that spiritual intimacy. And that's why God fights for you because he fights to keep that relationship between you and him. And God sometimes even removes people from your life that you didn't even know were bad for you or that were against you because he's doing everything he can because he loves you so much to protect you from people that will get close to you and not mean you any good. 
And God even knows what we need before we even ask you guys. There has not been a time in my life when God has not provided. And I can honestly say in relationships, there were times when I was left without what I needed. But I've never been left by God. God has always made sure I had everything that I needed. And even things I didn't even know I needed. Okay? And God was the first love of your life. He loved you before he even, before you even knew him or acknowledged him or even knew that God existed. So he is the very definition of intimacy because he can see into us in ways that nobody else can and nobody will ever be able to. And God's love is the only love that's unconditional. It doesn't have any expiration date. God never and has never lied to you or misled you. And he knows how to comfort you in any given situation. So that's why it's so important to have a spiritually intimate relationship with God. Because as long as we live on this earth, you guys, we're going to need him. Things are going to come up and God is going to have to be your anchor. So let's talk about who we should really be seeking intimacy with. God, number one, for those of you that are married, your spouse, and for us singles, we need to be seeking intimacy with somebody that actually has a good character. Number one, they prove to you that, you're, that they're on your side, that they're for you. They're not jealous hearted. You know, they're not trying to steal the limelight. They, they're, they're not trying to control your life. Number two, somebody that has the same feelings for you as you have for them. There's no point in trying to be intimate with somebody that's not really even into you the way you're into them because you're going to be the one that ends up getting hurt. Number three, somebody that's proven to be trustworthy. That's why I say, you guys, you got to spend time with people to find out if they're even trustworthy, you guys. Sometimes we just fall in love and we just put our hope and all our trust and, and people and we really don't even know them, you guys. We haven't even connected with them outside of the physical connection. Number four, a person that knows how to be private. You know, I've never seen so many people that want to publicize their relationships. Sometimes you got to know when it needs to just be you and her or you and him. Sometimes y'all need to spend some time just you and them before you get everybody else on social media all up in y'all's business. Number five. Somebody that's open and not afraid of intimacy, that's willing to, to, to be close to you and wants the same intimacy that you want. Number six, somebody that's loyal and monogamous. Number seven, this is so important. Somebody that knows how and is willing to forgive because in any relationship, you're going to make mistakes and they're going to make mistakes. And you can't get close to somebody that you know is going to judge you harshly if you make a mistake or you feel like that they're not going to forgive you because you'll always have your guard up. You won't always be honest with them because you're afraid, you know, that, that they're going to walk away from the relationship or they're going to be angry in the relationship. And so my final thought in a society where everyone is on social media and has been talking about or a million different ways for people to hook up on all these different sites like Tinder and Snapchat, Instagram, all of that where you can DM and get a date or whatever, whatever, you know, they make it easy to access new relationships and connections with people on the surface. Most of the time, the connections are made because of a physical attraction instead of getting to know one another and developing intimacy on a deeper level. Then we all wonder why relationships fail or we end up in a loveless marriage or even in divorce. We all deserve to be seen and to be loved through all four aspects of intimacy. 
You deserve the best and they do too. The goal is that forever relationship, you guys. And it's out there. But we all have to be willing to do the work. Thank you guys for watching. Love you guys. Have a great weekend. Stay warm. It's a little chilly here. God bless. And I will see you guys. Won't see you next week because it's Thanksgiving next Thursday. So I want to say happy Thanksgiving. And I will send you all a little post on the page. But God bless you guys. Please take care of yourself. Don't sell yourself short in relationships, you guys. Y'all deserve the best. I deserve the best. So you have got to be willing, like I said, to do the work. You have got to be willing to go deep with people in conversation. That's the beginning of intimacy is the conversations that we're having. And we've got to not be afraid to ask those important questions. Because like I said before, what you don't deal with in the beginning, you're going to end up dealing with later on in the relationship. I love you guys. Y'all take care. Stay safe. Happy holidays. Bye.